The day comes when scientists in one of the biotechnology laboratories begin to clone famous personalities for very large fees, of course. In fact, many rich people would like to have a child of a genius like Vivaldi, Galileo or Michelangelo. Soon, however, people decide to take a swing at something far more valuable, God himself. After Lucifer rebelled against the power of God in heaven, he was defeated by the archangel Michael, and flaming meteor was thrown into the underworld, where he had to remain in chains and punishing flames. Michael himself chained him to a rock and cried out to return as a humble angel, to which Lucifer replied that he would rather reign in hell than serve in paradise and he threatened that he would return as ruler of the world. Over time, Lucifer was joined by numerous demons as he craved revenge. Meanwhile, on Earth, Lucifer's disciples set up a temple at the site of his fall into the abyss, and they believe that one day he will return to rule on Earth. Our time. Laura Milton, an American student, is trying to persuade her professor to accept her thesis on the theme that there are no evil or good spirits, but he refuses, offering to discuss the subject in an intimate setting. But now the girl refuses. At the same time, a rare exhibition begins at the museum, the Shroud of Turin, which contains the DNA of Jesus and is a record of the fact of his resurrection. Everything is on display. Laura enters the museum after receiving a pass, a badge from a priest she knows. Marconi explains that Christ was wrapped in the shroud the day he died, but that when he rose from the dead, his body shone so brightly that his imprint remained on the cloth. Thus, the shroud is a picture of Jesus. The priest then escorts Laura to the statue of the Archangel Michael, who has been brought to the museum to guard the shroud. The War of the Angels was the first war and the first evil, but Laura disagrees. Evil is not an external mystical force, it is a personality. And when trouble happens to loved ones, it is foolish to blame the devil. But Marconi is sure that only Michael stands between the devil and men. There are many prophecies that Lucifer will return, but the father hopes that he will not find a way out. The priest leaves to go about his business, and Laura gets comfortable and begins to draw. Suddenly, she hears her name, but no one is around. She calms down and continues to work. It's evening, and the gallery is about to close. The last group of tourists enters the museum, and while the guard is distracted for a moment, a figure in a black cloak separates from the group and makes his way through a side door. Despite the late hour, Laura is still working, when she thinks Lucifer's head on the statue is moving, followed by the cry of a raven. The girl walks to the window without noticing the sinister figure behind her, who pulls a sword from Michael's hand and walks away. Laura closes the window and gathers her things. The guard is ready to escort her out, but she refuses. She still has to see Padre Marconi. She goes to the chapel and sees a figure in black slaying the guard with a sword. The girl runs away in terror and hides in the confessional, watching as the woman with the sword breaks the glass over the shroud. Padre Marconi arrives at the noise, and in the name of Saint Michael, demands that the sacrilege cease. But the woman throws him aside and pierces him with her sword. Laura moves carelessly, and the villain notices her. She orders her underlings to take the shroud and the girl, hoping that he might like her. The bandits leave, while the mortally wounded priest summons the Archangel Michael to occupy his body and defeat his enemies. Immediately, a luminous whirlwind descends from the heavens, and the father comes to life. He tries to catch up with the villains, but they drive away. The plot is moved to a private auction, where one of the scientists, Dr. Laurent, explains that he has managed to create a procedure by which he can grow babies from the DNA of great men, thus resurrecting the most prominent figures in the history of mankind. And as proof, he presents the reincarnation of the great Vivaldi and his proud parents. The next lot, he presents the new Michelangelo Buonarroti, and the whole rises in a burst of delight. The bidding begins when a woman in black appears in the gallery and beckons to the doctor. He rushes to her call. The pair travel to the devil's castle, where the doctor sees the shroud. At last, Lucifer will have a decent home. Meanwhile, Laura is dragged into some room, where several girls are already sitting in chains. All of them are horrified by what is happening and do not understand why they are there. A few men enter, take a blood test and photograph Laura, while Father Marconi, or rather the Archangel Michael in his body, makes his way to the guard room, where two monks are watching the murder videos. Seeing the one who was murdered in front of them alive, they are astonished, as he finds out where the keepers of the shroud were, and how could they have allowed this to happen. It is explained to him that the Cardinal, responsible for everything, is not himself at the moment. He sees secret cults and the devil's minions. 
and now he is in the asylum of St. Michael. Archangel takes the car keys and drives to the Cardinal's house, while the doctor isolates DNA from the blood traces on the shroud. The old Cardinal meets Michael with a gun, and upon learning of what has happened becomes enraged, he warned them. But looking into the man's eyes, he realizes he is not Marconi. The Cardinal shows Michael Lucifer's castle and suggests that his minions intend to revive him. He reminds him, the scriptures say that one day the devil will be freed from his chains and will rise from the underworld. Apparently, the time has come. Two monsters are responsible for his release, a woman and an underground monster. But only Michael himself, or God, can set Lucifer free. The devil's minions have offered him the bodies of virgins for centuries to get a vessel for the devil, but human bodies are too weak. Although there was one woman in history who was able to bear and give birth to a son of God. And today, science is ready to open the gates to the devil using Christ's DNA. Michael asks to be taken to the castle. Meanwhile, the girls try to devise an escape plan and share their experiences. It turns out that Laura's husband and son are dead. Instruments inform the doctor of a successful DNA extraction, and the walls in the underworld begin to crumble, heralding the devil's release. While the doctor informs Liz of a complete match of all the right parameters with Laura's body. And the women wait for the attendants to arrive and pounce on them. It seems that they will succeed, but another group rushes to the rescue and the girls are dragged into the laboratory. They are laid on tables, and despite desperate resistance, fertilized eggs are injected into their bodies. Liz convinces Laura to put up with it, for Lucifer is bound to like her. In the meantime, Cardinal escorts Michael to the entrance to the dungeon and warns of caution. A monster awaits ahead. At this time, the devil's minions gather in the hall with the well. Two impregnated girls are tied to a pillar in the center, and the monster who has come out takes them and leads them to the gateway to the underworld. The girls are put in an iron cage and lowered down, while Lucifer is already waiting for them. Sensing the approach of the possible Holy Mothers, he removes their colors and, transformed into a luminous stream, rushes towards them. The women are seized by the subterranean monsters and the stream enters one of them. But her body fails and she dies. Then the glowing worm enters Lara's body. Liz and the servants greet the living woman with delight. The choice is made. She is escorted into a glass cage, where it is explained that her child will be the new Jesus. Meanwhile, Michael sneaks inside the castle and, having obtained a guard's uniform, finds the shroud and tries to find Laura. The doctor enters, but Michael rejects him and sets fire to the laboratory. He finds Laura, but the woman realizes it is not her longtime friend. She runs away, the Archangel has to run after her. He manages to drag her into a storage room, where he explains who he is and finds out exactly what was being done to the woman. The couple escapes when Liz is informed that the shroud is missing. She gives an order to detain Laura at all costs, and the guards rush in after her. Laura and Michael in the meantime try to hide from the underground monster in narrow passages, but it catches up with them and attacks the Archangel. And while he wages a hard fight, Laura is grabbed by the guards. The enraged woman threatens Liz to kill herself and the child, and she orders her to be taken to a cell. Meanwhile, Michael is captured and put on a chain in the dungeon, while Laura is tied to a bed. Liz is willing to do anything to keep the baby. After gathering all his strength, Michael breaks the chains and frees himself, while the castle guards search for the shroud hidden in the dungeon. The monster manages to see the Archangel descend into the underworld. After reaching the bottom, he's attacked by the imprisoned souls and discovers that Lucifer has been freed and his sword is missing. Then the demon of greed, Mammon, flies to him and announces that they will soon close the gate and Michael will remain here instead of Lucifer. And he scoffs at his foolishness to come down in a mortal body. The Archangel is chained to the rock with Lucifer's sword. Laura, meanwhile, sees her child in an ultrasound, and he suddenly calls out her name. The woman wakes up terrified and sees Liz nearby, who finds out what Lucifer told her, and then tells the story of a brave warrior and a tyrant who were equals. But the tyrant wanted the warrior to be his slave, but he refused, and soon he would rise up and join the fight. Laura speaks unflatteringly of the demon, for which she is slapped in the face. After which Liz explains the transformation happening to her body by the need to make it comfortable for the Divine Child. But the woman doesn't want to accept her imposed role as the mother of an incomprehensible creature. Meanwhile, the people who were given to Lucifer come to Michael, pronouncing the oath, saved one, saved all, and questioning him about his origins. 
Discovering that it is Michael himself, they demand proof, but Michael needs a sword. At this point, they are attacked by demons. The men flee. Laura is again visited by the worm, Lucifer, who goes inside her. He speaks to her and convinces her to give birth to the baby he wants, after which she can do what she wants, even kill Liz. The woman calms down and sees herself with the baby in her arms. But one day she frees herself and terribly mutilates the guards and escapes from the ward. When she sees the consequences of her actions, she is horrified. What has been done to her? She manages to make her way to a warehouse and after locking herself inside, she drinks a canister of chlorine. Liz finds it and promises that soon Lucifer will consume her completely and then she will find peace. But then Laura suddenly gains unprecedented strength, grabs the hated Liz and spews the contents of her stomach on her. From Laura's womb, Lucifer himself begins to speak to Liz and demands that the woman be killed as soon as he is born and to destroy all who knows of what is happening. Laura is imprisoned in a glass sarcophagus to prevent any further attempts to kill the child and Lucifer returns to the underworld where he sees Michael and taunts him. He offers an alliance that no one will be able to defeat, but the Archangel refuses to support the rebel. He thanks Michael for his new home, the body of Jesus himself, which will be his own. Lucifer flies away and the Archangel suddenly realizes this is not at all what he thought. It is not the devil, but God who has chosen Laura. She will give birth to Christ, not the devil's vessel. He asks the people to bring his sword, but the demons are close and the sword is heavy. But two men risk their lives to bring the weapon and Michael is set free. He dispels the demons and promises to return for his saviors. Michael returns to Earth and finds the shroud. Then he goes to Laura's sarcophagus. He is horrified to see her change and tries to tell her that this child is not evil at all. It is he who will defeat the devil. But Laura gets out and throws Michael away. Then she stands over him and tells him that the waters are already breaking. Searing jets pour out on the Archangel and he screams in pain. Losing his strength, Laura places Michael in her lap and demands that he kneel. He refuses and the woman sinks her fingers into his neck. With the last of his strength, Michael promises that the devil will not be able to control the child. He is the one who will defeat Lucifer because the blood of Christ does not flow and good is always stronger than evil. Enraged, Laura throws Michael aside and begins to destroy everything around her. But then the birth begins. The devil's followers gather in the castle courtyard while Liz takes the born baby away. Laura is thrown down the well and the monster takes a chain with a sharp tip and goes into the courtyard. Liz brings the baby out and shows it to the assembled people. The end of God's tyranny has come. She orders the people to kneel and calls upon Lucifer to receive the baptism of blood. At the same moment, the monster begins to spin his terrible weapon, crushing everyone in the courtyard. At this time, Michael comes to his senses and goes out into the yard as the doctor kisses the baby and dies under the blows. Liz carries the baby away and Michael finds Laura who has managed to hold onto the edge of the well and pulls her out. The pair catch up with Liz's car and while Laura picks up her baby, Michael calls him the god who chose his mother. He asks the woman to find the cardinal and goes to the well himself. He seals the entrance to the underworld where all the demons of hell have rushed, but the monster rejects him and opens the gates again. And then Michael detonates the explosives he said earlier. The castle explodes to the great joy of the cardinal. A bit later, the cardinal and Laura with the child in her arms come to the temple and return the shroud. And Michael descends into the underworld and frees the people who believed in him. After a while, Liz observes Cardinal and Laura with a grown boy walking through the woods and she calls the baby Lucifer. And he turns around and shows a dark jet showing out of his nose. Then he turns away. Pretty unusual film, which raises the themes of the struggle between good and evil, but viewed through the prism of the scientific achievements of our time. And some doubts arise as to whether man truly understands what he is really doing.